Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the garage. Um, while we're still waiting on parts for the Chevy refresh, uh, we're going to try to do a, a clutch in this bad beast. It's a lariat, so the inside's kind of clean, actually, for its age. It's not too bad. See? So we've got the friction plate. Oh, that's right. He actually did order. That is right. Duralast is carrying not just an OEM, but an upgraded. It was a heavier duty clutch than stock. And it was a little more. Just a little more, actually. It wasn't too bad. I don't know if it's just the friction plate that's different or if everything is different. But we've got throw out bearing there and a new boot pilot needle pilot bearing full of pieces of cardboard it looks like so that's cool the hardest part is is four-wheel drive it's got a giant transfer case and it's right up against the gas tank let's see if we can take a look but there's the transfer case the drive line to the back, drive line to the front there somewhere, there it is, phone, but there's not a lot of space there to scoot out of the engine. And thank God I got this thing, because that is going to be heavy. I don't know yet if I'm gonna, I wanna try to pull the transfer case and transmission out in one unit, as one unit. So it's just these four screws here. One in each corner. Just like the Ranger, it looks like. It's one of those weird lobed or bolts. But I just put a wrench on that nut. And... Oh, there it is. So what I think I have to do is take this nut off and put it on the other side. As I tighten it down on the other side, it'll pull the stud out. That'll tighten down, and then hopefully it'll start to just pull it out. And there it goes. And then it falls out to the ground. I have more of that nasty yellow sh those look like eight mils, two eight mil bolts. Hopefully I can do that without destroying that insulation. <clears throat> okay, cool. Okay, I'm gonna get this sensor off. Just wiggled right off of there. But messing with that clip. I'll take the main nut out or bolt and see if that'll let it come out. There's this one there. And what does that go to right there? So it took me a second, but I got it out. Um, I've got this 17 millimeter air chuck tool and it fits perfectly to push that collar in and then you can wiggle the whole thing out after you push the collar in but I needed two hands I used that to push it in and this to get under here and wiggle it out it was it was alright it is what it is now I think that's everything for random attachments uh, let's do the drive lines. They're just some U-bolt style retainers. Marked them with a sharpie, so they go back 
to where they came from. Don't get flipped around 180 degrees. All right, so I took the front drive line completely out just to get it out of our way. Uh, it seemed to just want to hang out. And I didn't have zip ties big enough to hang it up, so just to keep it out of our way, took it all the way out. I've got the transmission, um, what is this, cross member is out, um, and then there's that upper bracket to the cross member, I just unbolted it from right there. On this side, the exhaust was in the way, uh, we had to remove both pieces, the upper and the lower cross member, and those are just uh, 15 millimeter bolts with 18 millimeter nuts, and the uh, train mount was three quarters to get those out we had to sneak the trans mount out of the way first because we couldn't jack it up enough to get the studs out of the mount or out of the cross member so mount came out then cross member came out then the drive line came out the back ones out laying her on the ground mount Mike's got all the bell housing bolts out and the jacks hooked up good as the angle you guys are gonna get unfortunately I don't want to crush my phone uh, so scared right now all right pry loose carefully Something happening? Yeah, yeah. How's it looking over there on that side? It's looking like it's gonna crush me in the falls. You got like maybe an eighth of an inch separated over here. I can't even. We can't even move this thing. Oh, you know what? Yeah. We're up against the body still. So let me lower it in here. Right. Everybody, watch the heck out. jacks we managed to get it slid back just enough a painstaking process who knows if we'll be able to get it back in there but we've got two jacks here and unfortunately that's as low as this thing will go so we can't really slide it all the way out of here so Mike's gonna we you learned a trick off of watching roadkill the other when it was a YouTube channel but we stuffed that socket with soap and then we're gonna stuff the pilot bearing cavity with uh, with some more soap. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of soap. But I cleaned up the surface uh, with the surface prep disc here and some WD-40 and then I cleaned it all off with brake clean so it should be good to go 
And it didn't have any grooves or edges worn into it, so it's, I don't think it's needing replacing. Um, the rear main seal, though, that's something I still don't know if we should address while we're here or not. Okay, so the soap idea isn't working for us this time. Um, so we're going to go get a puller, but in the meantime, we're going to check and see if this is straight. Got the indicator set up here, and it's right on the pulley. Mike's going to turn the engine over by hand. Make sure we're touching it. Yeah, we're touching it for sure. Okay, it's not moving. Go ahead, keep going. What's happening is it's dragging, but yeah, let's see. It's the jiggle that was making it move before, but we're good now. All right, pimping Mike. Yeah, we're good. We're straight. All right. Well, we pulled the flywheel off, and we are gonna replace the main seal. You can see that's super bad. get all that cleaned up and all this cleaned up and then uh, get everything back together and we are replacing the slave cylinder as well I got a new one of those lifetime warranty again just because we're in here and why not Ugh. all right so Mike cleaned it all up or he installed the uh, seal with some black silicone I cleaned it all up and uh, while I went to the store to grab the puller he put in the seal and now I just gotta attach a slide hammer to it so let's see if we can yank this sucker out all right, so I started pulling it out or slide hammering it and it's just pulling out the center so I think and this is probably gonna be a mess and then we'll have to reset the tool uh, and hammer on it again. Hang on a sec, I'm going to have Mike hold the phone while I show you the needle bearings going all over the place. And then we're live. Uh, that was not supposed to happen. Well, the needle bearings didn't go all over the place, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. So the soap doesn't always work, I guess. For reasons shown. You see the inner diameter. The idea is the soap to be able to get behind the bearing and push it out. But if the diameter is the same as the inner diameter, then there's nothing for the soap to push against. So. So I'm just going to show you the pilot bearing is in now. 
Got a new pilot bearing, a new seal, all cleaned up. We're gonna clean up the torque converter bolts. Not torque converter. It doesn't have a torque converter. <clears throat> Flywheel bolts. Put some Loctite on it here. Uh, seals in. We got this guy to put in next after we get the flywheel and the clutch on with this stuff. Then we'll put this in the transmission slave cylinder. Hopefully we'll get the transmission in before it gets dark. It's starting to get dark. Okay, so Mike beat me to it. I've got the but I've got the nuts, or the bolts, wire brushed with some blue thread locker. At least I did that. Mike grabbed the flywheel and just crawled underneath there. He's trying to be a hero. No thanks, buddy. <laughs> this is going to be a team effort, for sure, because that thing is a heavy piece of cast iron. Um, is there any kind of alignment dowels or markings? Cause there's like dynamic. Uh -oh. Whoop. Nope. Hold on, let me see this. Okay, so there's a hole right there, where there's a hole in the crank, or the marking of that hole. Anyways, we want to make sure we put that right back where it came from. So you want to turn that to your left. Turn it to the right one. Oh. Oh. Okay, we're gonna set the camera down. <laughs> Maybe I can prop it. Yeah, okay. Now let's figure out this. Okay, lift it up. Single fingers? Yeah. And that's going, yeah. Okay, so this is 12 o'clock right here. Okay. So let's just see if we can get a bolt started. Go a hair to the right. More right. There it is. Now, it's hung at least, I believe. I think we're in. So we finally got it hung up in there. Sorry that sucks for you guys. I appreciate you hanging in this long. Um, we had to bust out the uh, LED shop light. That thing's doing good. But I think we should just use the wrench to slowly press it onto that shoulder. Whoa! <clears throat> I mean, that's in your face. Oh no. Yeah. Oops, wrong direction. You recording? Yep. Yeah, so it turns out if you're wrong, this thing will let you know because the bolt holes don't line up. And I line up in one direction, so we were off by one. We just had to rotate it to the left. And it's good now. And ow, I just hit my head. And my wife just pulled up with the kids for my son's golf tournament. It was day one. She's probably about to tell me all about how he did. He's got day two tomorrow. Hi. What's going on? What's going on? Don't run away from me! It's just a camera! <laughs> <laughs> she ran like we were gonna rob her or something. Okay. So we're gonna start with 80, that's about lug nut type. And 
I'm probably going to have to go on and hold on to the crankshaft. Probably. But we're going to use these bolts to walk it on. It. I think it's on. Let me just tighten the rest of those down. What's up, buddy? Hey, Dad. Hi. We bought you a cowboy hat. You bought me a cowboy hat? Yeah. Me and Jess is mom. That is so cool. Well, that's cool. That's 80? You set this to 80? Yeah. Wow, that's not tight at all. Hey, buddy. I'll leave this up. I'm going to have to start calling you Woody now. On. Howdy, howdy, howdy. There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> I come out too. So Mike's just putting in the new slave cylinder. It's just two bolts, it's super simple. And I wire brush the uh, bolts for the clutch. Got some Loctite on them. So those are all good to go. Clutch assembly's right there. So remember I told you this is Duralast uh, high performance option. Since he, it is four-wheel drive and he does tow, uh, he opted to go with that. Now, we won't be using this that came with it because we went with the uh, whole clutch assembly afterwards, so he'll have a spare bearing. Well, a little speed bump, unfortunately. The, um, well, let's just show you here. Let's get the clutches side by side. So, I think this is going to be my thumbnail. <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't realize it at first, but upgrading to the heavy duty means that we're going to have to get the bigger bolts. Um, you can see a big difference. The new one we got is larger. But there was multiple sets of bolt holes that were threaded on that flywheel. The problem is they're a lot larger than the ones that came in here. You can tell by the size of the bolt hole that one compared to that one we so we just got to get the bolts and hopefully it'll still fit inside the bell housing but we'll cross that bridge when we get there all right so I went into the store real quick and we've got six one inch bolts seven flat washers and a bunch of locking washers all hardened just in case and then uh, one inch might be a little long, uh, but we've got the flat washers to kind to make up the space. So we're going to run the uh, reamer through all the holes in the flywheel because they've never been used before. We'll make sure they're clean and then we'll uh, see if we can get this thing bolted on. I got this one to do and this one. And then I need you to rotate the engine so I can do that one. Okay. It's got to come down here. Did you get a buzz? Now let's see if we can get the clutch in. Probably need an extension. 
So that's gonna look pretty darn sexy, I think. That's some heavy duty stuff. Heavy duty hardware, heavy duty clutch. I'll make sure that's how it is, okay. Alright, so here's where we're at. We actually ended up busting out a third jack so we could manipulate the tilt with these two jacks at the back end and the Cheney jack at the front. It actually went in pretty smooth. We're not 100% there just yet, um, but we did feel the splines engage, we believe. And we've got the dowels lined up. Um, it's it's just trying to force them over the dowels at this point so we're gonna use the bolts to try to help guide everything in get a couple bolts started for guidance and we gotta get we're not quite 100% lined up so we gotta do a little more wiggling so this side needs to go up. It's a red jack. So we're just about there. And we just need to suck it up a little bit. Home free. Gosh, the second one's spreading in. Yeah, mine too. I'm getting two of them in. They're going in super easy. So it's going in fine. We're just slowly walking it back and forth. He's going to tighten up a little bit on his end. We'll get all the bolts in. And then we'll put the cross member in. Well, it's the next day. Me and Mike were out here till 10 or uh, midnight last night. Got the transmission in. And we got halted when uh, we couldn't get the hydraulic line in. It was dark, so we couldn't figure out why. But this morning, see if we can get in real close here. So, see the clip that's around the outside of it? You can't really see the one on the right. You can see the ear on the left there. But that clip that's in there on the right. On the outside, up in there, it's hitting the aluminum body inside. And it won't spread apart. It's got jammed up against the body when it was installed. And I guess we're just moving too fast and it was dark. We didn't realize it or something, but now I gotta try to figure out a way to clearance it because I don't want to remove the transmission again just to figure out another way. So I got this and hopefully I can just slide this in there. Like that. And kind of saw at it by hand. But we'll see. Okay, so it only took me about 10 minutes, but I did manage to clearance that clip and it's no longer touching the body. So now let's see if this line will go in.
I think we might have to. Uh, I might have set the phone down, guys. And I still might have to cut the other side, I'm not sure. Oh, that's so exciting. So that worked. It's in. It's in. Oh, thank God, too. I can move on. Buttoning up the electrical. It's in my hand, buddy. I'm talking to it. Next, we gotta bleed and then hook up electrical and linkage and drive lines. That's an important one. I, I need Mike over here to help me bleed this thing. All right, well, this thing's all buttoned up. I got the drive lines in. It went pretty smoothly. Once we, uh, once I got that line in, I got a, a second wind, you know. And then I had a little trouble bleeding. The, um, clutch. I guess the master cylinder ran dry. And the little rubber cup inside the reservoir fooled me into thinking that it was full because it was just the cup that was filled up and not the actual reservoir. And so I had to, I pulled that little rubber cup out. Let me show you. So inside here, there's a rubber cup that's meant to expand to take up the space as the fluid goes up and down, fluctuates as you uh, hit the pedal. The cup, the rubber thing was filled, but underneath the cup inside the reservoir had ran dry while I was trying to bleed it earlier. And then I just filled the whole thing up with air. So it took a lot of extra time to get that figured out. And it feels really good. And Mike helped me out with that. It's hot out here today. We're beat up, feel like we're covered in road rash and like we got beat with sticks, but let's get in there. Clutch in, oh, feels good too. Okay. First gear. Well, let's see here, we can get a shot of my foot and the ground. So the clutch is working and I'm barely letting it off. Forward and reverse, but uh, these stupid things. It's not easy to do one handed, but it's all good. I'm blocked in, so I can't take it for a drive, but it goes forward and backwards. It's super nice, too. It was stiff, man. When I pulled it up in here, that clutch pedal was so hard to press, and now it's just butter. It's got the upgraded clutch with the larger diameter. The thicker hardware, 3 8 hardware. This thing is going to be nice. Hopefully, it'll handle anything he's going to tow. Well, if you made it this far, thank you. Thanks for watching all the way through it. And, uh... And dealing with that uh, clutch line clip, man, that was a pain in the butt. As we noticed too, just the old master slave cylinder doesn't have an outside clip. It's got internal clips. Those teeth in there. And I don't know. But there's still some... Something to be desired, I guess, when it comes to that aftermarket clutch, but we got it figured out. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. I'm probably going to be working on Rose's uh, AC condenser. Stay tuned for that. Later.